Thank you everyone for being here. I know last day after lunch, it was a long conference, but uh, I'm excited to talk about this topic I'm very passionate about. So if you speak another language besides English, you're in the right place as well. Um, I'm gonna talk about my, my contributions to open source in several localization projects. And uh, my name is Julia. I'm a global technologist at Veeam. I'm also a CNCF ambassador, AWS community builder, very involved in communities. And I started my open source journey through localization. So I'm not a very technical person. Um, I'm learning, like everyone, they are always learning. But I feel like contributing to localization was the best way for me to learn tech. Kubernetes more specifically, because those are the projects that I contribute the most. So not only contributing, but also I mentor people on how to start uh, into open source and localization. So this has been helpful for me. And uh, I just want to know, like, do you know what the open source community and Seattle have in common? So they have four things in common. First, they're both driven by innovation. So they're always constantly developing new technologies, new tools and solutions. Uh, they both rely on collaboration. So from developers, contributors, maintainers, researchers, etc. They both organize events so, and welcome people to foster the community engagement. And they are both a big melting pot of cultures uh, with influences from people uh, from all over around the world. And this is the only way we can grow and attain new heights, especially in the open source community. So like I said, uh, the open source community is a global community. I'm sure you know that. Here are just some stats. So the Linux Foundation has more than 900 open source projects with more than 23,000 contributors, people from all around the world, so more than 100 countries. And some projects, the main projects, they are translated in uh, more than 25 languages. There are events like these ones, smaller scale ones, bigger ones like KubeCon going on all over the world. And one of the main barriers to contribute to open source is not being a native English speaker because um, English is so pervasive in open source. So the first uh, barrier I, I hear is not being technical. And the, 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 the next one is uh, not, not knowing English very well. And there are other challenges. So the first challenge is, like I said, language skills. So reading, I would say, is the least and the most challenging uh, aspect of localization. Because on one, way, one end, if you're reading something and you don't understand, you can Google it, translate it, put it on ChatGPT, read it over and over again, and ask, ask someone uh, for help. But at the same time, everything in open source is written. Most things are written. So documentation, PRs, uh, communication on Slack, etc. So it makes the, the reading skill is very important in open source contributions. Writing as well, at the same time, since everything is written and you have to write so much in open source, it, it is a challenge for people that are non-native English speakers. Also because grammar can be difficult depending on your native language. Next, also speaking uh, can be uh, another challenge in the context of open source collaboration. You know, because participants' vocabulary may be limited. And I, th I think this obstacle becomes a little bit more pronounced uh, at advanced stages of open source involvement when uh, contributors, they want to engage more deeply in an open source, in a, a project like maintainer calls or if they want to propose new ideas. And uh, same, same for listening. So this can be very problematic uh, because conversations with native English speakers, they can speak very fast. Sometimes they can use idioms and expressions we don't understand. And uh, this is also in, in written uh, form of communication. So also trying to understand the different accents in English can be hard. Funny enough, you know, the American accent, I think, is one of the easiest ones to understand. Uh, so all of these language skills are hard. And I want you to put in your in the shoes of, you know, these non-native English speakers. Imagine if you go to a, a project, a big open source project, to the README uh, or to a repository on GitHub, a README repo, um, page, 
and you don't understand the language. Imagine you have to translate line by line. It would be really hard, right? Imagine going to the Kubernetes documentation and trying to understand it. But this is easier, right? So in a language, a language that you understand. And that happens with non-native English speakers because they don't understand at first and that's why localization is so important for, for everyone. I recently ran a poll on uh, LinkedIn and Twitter asking people if they thought that language was a barrier to open source contributions. And I was shocked with the results. So I thought it would, there would be more yeses, a lot more yeses than noes. And I got a lot of it depends on, but no one answered, no one commented why it depends on. Uh, and uh, I, I got a few comments on, on Twitter, but uh, like this person said, they wouldn't use a library that was in a different language because the, the, the fear of running into a bug and they needed help to, due to the, the language barrier. So that happens a lot. Also, they said it depends because uh, a lot of acronyms we don't understand and that makes you know, contributions harder in open source, you know, the PRs, acronyms. I want, I want to know if you all know uh, some of the, the open source acronyms. So the first one is very easy. I'm sure you all know. So it looks good to me. The next one, do, do you know? Acknowledgement, yes, that's easy. The, the, the third one, okay, similar to the second one. Then it gets a little harder. I, I didn't know some of these, these acronyms. Uh, work in progress, yes, I even, uh, it's very common in books, etc. A fake, as far as I know, I think Americans like, or English speakers, they know these, these acronyms, but non-native English speakers, they have no idea what it means. You know, if I recall correctly, and the last one, I'm not a lawyer <laughs> in uh, licensing issues. So these are challenges. And also there are a lot of cultural differences with people, like we said, it's a open source is a global community. People from all over the world, they are very different. C certain cultures, they have different norms when saying yes or no. So like Japanese people, they say yes and no very clearly. But people from Brazil, for instance, I'm from Brazil, we, tend, we, we don't say no. We tend to go around the subject and explain why not, but we don't necessarily say no. So like all these cultural differences are important to our knowledge as well. And what we can do um, to overcome these obstacles and, and have more uh, localization. So first, prepare the open source project right from the start for uh, to have a localization initiative as well because if you only think about that down the road it will be harder so have that in mind um, and localization is not just translating is you know keeping the meaning in your native language so it's not just using Google Translate or ChatGPT. I've seen a lot of people they want those green squares on, on GitHub and then they just translate, they try to participate in a localization project and they put on ChatGPT and then you can tell that it wasn't really uh, done by a native speaker. So also offer comprehensive documentation in multiple languages. If you can't, if you ha don't have the localization yet, provide tools and resources for easy translation. Encourage contributions, so to improve or correct translations, not only to, to do the localization, but correct them, and uh, so you can make the project more accessible globally. Always use clear and simple English. If you use an acronym and you know there are people that are non-native English speakers, maybe put in parentheses what it means. Also always don't make fun of non-native English speakers. I've seen that and uh, not on purpose. People, they don't make jokes on purpose, but it, that can be hurtful as well. And uh, try to encourage newcomers to express their opinions, even if they don't use the right vocabulary, if their English is not perfect, and make them comfortable to do so. Uh, avoid slangs and local expressions, so always try to be helpful. Uh, leverage asynchronous communication methods. This is very important. It's also a challenge 
because the, the community is so global, there are people from all over the world contributing to open source. And a lot of times the calls are on uh, American time zones. So, and, and that doesn't help people in Asia. So trying to have these asynchronous communication are, is very important. And uh, finally, uh, beware of Google Translator and ChatGPT. Like I said, you know, uh, we can tell when you've used those tools. Like we all can tell like marketing or if you write something on LinkedIn, you can, you can tell that it's from ChatGPT. And same way with localization projects. So if it's not your language, it's fine. You can contribute in some other ways. But uh, if it's your language, you're more than welcome to do so. And uh, yeah, we, we want more people like you. And with that, I thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions, I have some time, but I'll be around because we have another, another talk right, right soon. But thank you so much for being here.